Well, I've got another explanation for this, John, and I think the boy is guilty of this charge of painting a massive penis on his parents' roof. <laughs> but I think what it is, John, is it's the pitch... <laughs> it's, the... it's actually the pitch markings from the old English sport of the roof game, which is an early form of football uh, which right. originated on the roof of Eton College Chapel okay. in the 16th century. Yeah. Now, the story goes that an infestation of dry rot resulted in the discoloration of the roofing timbers on the chapel in the shape of the aforementioned anatomia. Uh, and during a decade of flooding, the school was forced to move the entire uh, school operation onto the chapel roof. Now, they started playing the roof game using uh, this, this kind of pitch marking that nature had created on their roof. Uh, and now in the roof game, one team defends the Nadge end, named after the two semicircular shapes at one end, which look like an ecclesiastical Nadge, which is a two-headed scepter used by school is chaplains it? in medieval is times. It? Yep. Is it? Right. This team was known as the Nadges. Um, <laughs> now the other team defended the end nearest the chapel's main bell, or the bell end, where the dry rot fungi had grown bountifully around the outline of a spare bell that had been left on the roof for, uh, after the school campanology society meeting. <laughs> had degenerated into an alcoholic sea of fumbling homosexualism, um, as is traditional at schools such as Eton. <laughs> so that led to uh, a bell left unattended on the roof on a stormy night. This team, of course, was known as the, the Bell Ends. Now, the attacking side had to use the slope of the roof to curl the ball, which is originally made from the stomach of the school's least popular boy, to curl that around the defenders up the long, narrow centre of the pitch. This process was known as chaffing, as the boys would roll up their school gowns, or shafts, uh, uh, to use as slings to impart extra spin on the ball. Once a team had reached the end of the main central portion of the pitch, its players would shout the word, shaft, to signal <laughs> that the, the chaffing phase of the attack was complete. On the call of shaft, the attacking team would attempt to score. For the bell ends, this involved scratching the nadgers, or tagging each member of the nadger defence with the ball whilst oh, in the nadge zone. Good God. And for the nadgers, a score revi- required them to yank them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yank the bell ends. In other words, to wrestle the defenders out of the bell end area, leaving an attacking nadger with the ball in the unoccupied zone. Now, of course, neither side scored either a yank or a scratch between 1604 and 1856, making it very like the Eton Wall game. When a successful scratching of the nadgers has attracted such a nationwide press interest that Queen Victoria and Prince Albert were invited to pop down the road from Windsor Castle to watch a game. Whilst observing from above in the Royal Hat Air Balloon, the professional queen and mother of eight was seen to succumb into fits of giggles, pointing at the outline of the pitch and chuckling to Albert who himself then began to laugh. Queen Victoria was then seen to apparently grab Albert's nethercots with her royal hand provoking yet more laughter as the loving couple disappeared from view into the balloon's basket. Albert reappeared briefly just to sever the cord tethering the balloon to the ground and the royal balloon floated off somewhat unsteadily rocking vigorously from side to side to the sounds of lascivious growls from the prince consort and ecstatic whoops from her majesty. Nine months later Princess Beatrice was born but the headmaster and provost of Eton were so disturbed at the moral and psychological devastation wreaked upon the schoolboys from seeing the monarch thraggling her husband that they instantly banned the roof game from ever happening again. Having viewed the roof from above and realising that it did in fact look quite like a gentleman's exhibits, they covered the old wooden roof with a giant tarpaulin which currently resides in the Guinness Book of Records as the world's largest posing pouch and the roof game fell into obscurity until it was just recently heroically resuscitated by this brave young teenager from Berkshire. And of course the terms Nadja, Bellend and Shaft remain in popular usage today. You are a husband and father of two. (laughs) I love my history, John. Is that a crime?